Well, before we get going today, we have a little repair procedure that we need to do on a few items here. We have a cylinder that's leaking. We've got a number of things that are leaking. <laughs> got a I'm cylinder. I'm good. <laughs> got a cylinder leaking on this blade here. We don't know if we've got an O-ring gone in this gland knot or a packing. So we're just going to swap that out with another one. And Alex had a cylinder on this truck of hers that leaked yesterday. We're thinking it's just an O-ring on this bottom side here. But instead of screwing around with it, they're just going to go ahead and put a new one on it. And we have a leak on the chopper. But it's of a different kind. And we'll show you what we're dealing with here right now. We have a panel on the back of this transition chute that has done blown a hole in itself. And that is right here. So Kaz has one at their Lowville. Oh, I got a bolt missing down there too. Kaz has one at their Lowville store. Mike is down in Cortland. So those stores are at opposite ends of the uh, state here. And uh, we should be able to get one late afternoon. But in the meantime, we're going to pull it out and see if we can't maybe patch it. It's They're nearly impossible to patch because of the way they wear. But we're going to get it, take it out, see if there's something that we can do to it to put a Band-Aid on it to get it to run for a few hours. Andrew's having trouble merging. He wanted teeth for his merger. We were out of them, and that is what Mike is picking up now, is teeth for Andrew's merger. So let's pull this panel out. We'll see what it looks like. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do anything to it, but we'll see. So we've got, looks like four 8mm bolts, and I think it'll slide out unless there is something that is bolting it to this upper lip here. I'm not sure, but we'll go ahead and dig it on out of here. Open that inside, we'll have more stuff mucho broken, right? Open it when you get outside, all right? All right, they got their cylinder off. We've uh, put it on a small pallet, uh, not that one. Do you have plugs? Do you have plugs for it? Okay, put it in a put it in a five-gallon pail. Well, you should push the rod back in, but either or, yeah. They dump the oil out of it. Put it in a, put it in a five-gallon pail. I'll see if I can find a 90 for that top one. Yeah. So we're gonna throw this panel up on the bench here. Why did that make that noise? Why did that make that noise? Something get caught. That pin's not too long, is it? Yeah, the pin's too long, so I gotta put the old one in the top. Okay. Uh, tell him to put the. Uh, tell him to put the PTO in neutral and gravity the gate down. All right. So the pins for them are too long, and then what I did is I took a pin and welded a washer to it and uh made it so it bottomed out so yeah that made it by there that time the other idea they have is to put washers on the back side but a tree branch is just going to take them clips off use the old pins in both spots what do you have cotter pins in them okay a tree branch won't take those off but it'll take them other ones off you're going to have to take the plugs out in order to get that rod to go in. Both of them will have to come out. All right. So here's what we're working with here. We have a pretty good amount of wear right here. 
and this is our hole so I'm thinking I'm gonna try to put a panel on here like that right up to this point and um, see if that works it doesn't look like this part of the panel is coming into it so we can get this to work I think I also have a tab that's broken on this side all right so I need to find them guys a fitting or something so that they can drain that cylinder no, they got it drained. Well, what I've decided to do here is to put a piece across the whole thing. And we're just going to use a piece of mild steel. We could probably get through the day by just putting something in behind this. And that might be the better idea. But we're just going to go ahead and... Put a whole piece on there because if we put something on the back side of this then this might rip through and long as the chopper is at the shop we might as well do something here so we're going to go ahead and cut this out with the plasma cutter We have our piece here all cut to match the actual shape of this panel however this panel is curved a little bit so we need to form this panel and we're gonna go ahead and form it in the hydraulic press so we're just gonna put a little bit of a belly bend in it and we'll try to get it to fit that panel best we can
try this. See if it matches it. We might have to hit it in two more spots. Yeah, as you can see, that's a little too much. We'll have to just push it back a little bit. So we have pushed it back some. We'll see what this does. All right, we need to take a little bit more out of that one side there. Well, we have been back and forth several times to take this bend back out and this is where we're going to leave it so we're going to clamp this one end down here and then this little bit uh where it's lifted up there we can push that down with vice grips and get it tack welded into place so we'll go ahead and get it all fitted up and then we'll go through and tack weld it Well, we've got this all clamped down into place. We'll have to move the vice grips down to this end here. But we'll put a couple of quick tacks across the bottom, come up through the side, zap it down where the vice grips are clamping it, and uh, get it into the chopper here. Well, we've got this panel all in place, and I went ahead and welded this tab back on this one side too down on this bottom right hand corner of that tab was broke out so we'll go ahead and bolt this into place and we will get the knives sharpening and we won't know if this is going to exactly work until we get hay going through uh, the chopper so let's get this in there get our knives sharpened figure out what direction we're going in and we'll get chopping here all right so this panel is right in underneath this other blower panel itself so the blower is right here and the knives you can just see them down in there they propel the feet up too this transition panel and then it hits the uh, blower here so we'll go ahead and get her bolted in and hopefully it works
Well, we've got that bolted in there, but we need to pull over on the grass. I need to pull the transition chute down from below, and I need to get this adjusted. It can either go forward or come backwards, and then we've got to raise it up a little bit as well. So we'll get that adjusted at the proper angle so that that feed can come right up from that bottom one and work right past this. The bottom wants to be down a little bit and the top wants to be forward a little bit. Well, we have pulled this over to the lawn. I can't really see where it needs to be adjusted because the panel that I flopped down comes up to this panel here. So if I just adjust this back all the way on the bottom and forward a good distance on the front or try to figure out where it was and then just step it back a little bit from where it was and we should be okay on the bottom and on the top. All right, I think we've got this pretty well adjusted. We won't know until we get feed going through it. So we're going to go ahead and pull up our lower panel, get that into place. We'll pull this over to where there's some water, get the knives sharpening, and get chopping here. Well, we are just getting started here. I didn't have a chance to turn the camera on right when I pulled into this field, but we just started. See where we hooked onto this windrow back there. And we must have our adjustments right because feed's going in the front and it's coming out the pipe. So we won't quite finish second cutting today. We're probably going to have a couple hours worth of chopping here uh, for tomorrow. Now this panel that we put on there is just mild steel. It's not a hardened steel. I'll be lucky to have it last the two days that I have of chopping here. Now it might last a little longer than that, but uh, the panels, even the chopper pipe, the little spout there, that is all made out of abrasive resistant steel. And the mild steel is just soft enough that it would wear out a pretty good amount of time. It would wear out pretty quick. That panel 
we have not uh, ever changed before. It's the original one, which was a Duraliner panel, and that's what we will end up replacing it with. So this haylage here is running at 64% moisture, 65, and we're somewhere in the neighborhood of about 18% protein. So we'll keep at it here and hopefully we don't get any rain today and that'll allow us to get a little closer to the finish line here. about 250 acres with that makeshift panel in there on that transition chute. About a thousand ton of material has gone across it so far or about a thousand ton after we get done uh, with this field here. So we're going to get back, cover the bunk, and then we're going to get the combine out of storage get the tarp onto it and start cutting some wheat so we'll uh, maybe get a little a uh, couple of clips in from covering the bunk and then we'll go ahead and finish up this video I know I've put a few of these second cutting chopping videos out and they get kind of monotonous after a while as far as being a viewer on the other end of these videos and it's kind of the same old stuff you're watching a machine go back and forth across the field and a goofball talking in behind the camera shining around like this doing that whatever or you get the occasional ride on the steering wheel which I don't, you know, the camera doesn't do too bad with that, really. It kind of keeps itself squared up. But we had to tud this hay out. Jared tudded it this morning. And then Andrew merged it here this afternoon. And it's still got a considerable amount of moisture in it. But it'll work good stacked up on top of the bunk here. So... We'll get maybe a couple clips in from the bunk, covering it, and uh, then we'll close out this video. So, we'll catch up with you in a little while here.
are going to get this chopper parked. Then we're going to cover this bunk quick. And then we'll go ahead and get the combine ready to roll here. So, we will go ahead and start throwing some tires here. Got the guys in the hay barn here grabbing some plastic. And we'll get to covering. While we're into the following day, we're going to cover the bunk now. We chose not to cover it last night because they had a lot of packing left to do. They've got it all packed pretty well now. We're going to go ahead and get started here. It is 30 foot at the highest point. My brother went up on top of it with one of the tractors that has GPS on it last night. And these are 17, 17 foot walls. So we'll get this covered. And then we'll get cutting some wheat here. I ended up getting a combine out a little while ago. And should be able to get rolling with it. Well, I am a little late getting out here to this bunk. We just more or less started covering. And my brother had a problem with a silo loader, so I just got down out of the silo. And these guys have got two sections of this plastic already on here. So we had a problem with a silo loader this morning. Brother did. And it has a bad blower housing. So he's gone after a blower housing now, and we'll put that in once he gets back. We should have this covered. These guys have got, oh, better than a third of this done already. And we'll just keep on throwing tires, right? Do you have a thought for everybody today, Nathan? Masturbation never gets out of hand. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I guess he's speaking from experience. Right, Jason? <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> All right. I will say, this is a beautiful packing job. Huh, Jason? Huh? <laughs> This makes this job so much easier using these cut sidewalls. We've got maybe, I don't know how many trailer loads we've bought of these so far. I think it's been four or five, maybe six. And these guys are, oh, they average about $2.35 to 38 cents a piece. So it's quite costly, but it does allow us to cover a lot faster. As long as we don't knock Sarge off the bunk here. They were, everybody was asking where you were in the last couple videos. So now we got you, right? Hiding. Hiding. All right. Hey, once you're four bucks, I think I'm doing good. As long as you don't knock him off. Yeah. Not on that side anyways. He can fall off on the other side, not this side. Yeah. Davey's got an injured wrist. He's been patting himself on the back too much. <laughs> Done went and hurt his wrist. Right, Andrew? Yep. The plastic that we use has a vapor barrier rolled in with it. So it has a thin layer of clear plastic along with the white and the black. 
Uh, I don't know if this is gonna make it all the way across. This bunk is 70 feet wide. They're good. They're good. Okay. We got a little excess here. So we'll go ahead and cut this off and get it spread. They good? You good, Nathan? Yeah, I'll toss me some. Well, we've got just a little bit left here. And then this job will be done. Tell him to go ahead. They do make a um, tire shooter. It's a long beam that goes on the payloader and all the tires go on in one row. Tell him to hold up, tell him to hold up. All right. Uh, but they, it only works good to come over if, it only works good on a bunk that you can get over both sides. I suppose down the middle is fine to shoot them off, but you need to stack them in a, in a row. We've got them on pallets and we're gonna try to use all cut tires on these bunks down here. Got some on that bunk, some over on that halage over there. But as you can see, we probably don't have enough to quite get it. Get them all anyways, yet. Yeah, well, we gotta hand some of these off. Well, we're down to the last little bit here. This plastic we get is in like 50 foot wide rolls by 150 or 60 long. And we, uh, we only got about 20 left, so we're unrolling this plastic the other way. So look at this spread out, and then we're gonna have about 20 foot left to do. So, <clears throat> let's go right this way. We might as well unroll this one, Jared. Oh boy. We don't have another piece somewhere, do we? Well, we just ended up running up to the hay barn to grab a miscellaneous piece of plastic. We've got a spot that is six or eight foot by about 20 that we lack covering. And then we're gonna wrap up this job here. We could push the bottom up underneath. Boy, if that ain't long enough, I don't know what it is. Actually, it's lacking a little bit or no? That's gonna work perfect. All right, we'll just fold the tail in underneath itself here. Very good. Good enough. Good enough. Now, who did this, Jay? Do you know? Ooh. Did the white Peterbilt and the red trailer do that? There's a couple close. Yeah, they almost hit this block here, so. Oh, well. Yeah. Good now, though. Yeah. Right <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this one. Well, yeah, maybe it's yeah. All right. Catch you at the next one.